As we uh, begin, though, I thought we might start with a song. Uh, it's obviously, we've been caught out by lockdown coming down upon us without notice again, and it's been a hard thing to grapple with. And uh, there's a song that I've got here that was written for the season of Lent, um, but really picks up on that uh, theme of us worshipping God in the midst of uh, dryness and barrenness. And so I thought we might begin uh, listening to this. Uh, you're welcome to sing along if you'd like, just uh, probably on mute. Uh, so let's uh, listen and sing together. So as we worship in the wilderness, we remember that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that we might declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. As we read in today's psalm, happy are those who live in his house, ever singing his praises. So open our lips, O Lord. And we shall declare your praise. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word and pray for this world and for ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. For to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he set before us. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your spirit that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. 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 God desires that none should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sin. Participants. In uh, God truly pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. For if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you. And also with you. And with all of you. Uh, we come now to uh, continue to reflect on God's word. Today's psalm for uh, today is, is Psalm 84, which begins, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord God of hosts. It speaks of our heart and our soul longing to be with God. And the reminder that better in God's courts is one day than a thousand elsewhere. But rather than uh, just reading this psalm out, we're going to sing it together. And I've got a special guest who's uh, provided us uh, with a recording of a song based on Psalm 84. So let's sing. Oh, 
Great. All right. Just a moment, friends. I've just got to stop the video now because we have a kids talk. So just a moment while I try and... Oh, no. Oh, what's going on? Hang on. There we go. I think I've got it fixed. Just a moment. Hang on, what's going on? Oh, Smudge, Smudge. Hi, I didn't realise you were joining the service, buddy. I haven't seen you since we left Christchurch. I know. You left me behind. It took me six months to walk here. Oh, I'm sorry, Smudge. I thought you wanted to stay up in Echuca. I did. But then crossing the bridge every day became a big deal. <laughs> I burst out of the border bubble and come here to Bendigo. Uh, well, Smudge, it's great to see you, but things aren't that much better here. But, hey, say, Smudge, why are you wearing a mask? It's for protection, George, from corona. Well, I'm sorry, Smudge. I, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think it's going to work. I think you're missing something. Really? You know what? I was actually thinking the same thing. This okay. latest lockdown's got me thinking I need some better protection. Yeah. I've got something. Hang on, just a minute. That, Smudge, come back. I, that's not what I meant, buddy. Ah, uh, there we go. Ta-da! Smudge, that's not how you wear a mask. I know that, George. I'm a puppet, not a fool. You're the fool. This isn't a mask. This is the helmet of salvation. Uh, this should save me from Rona. The smudge, I'm sorry. I don't think that's going to work either. You're still missing something. Right. You, you think I need more still? Got it. No. Just a minute. It's smudge, that's not quite what I meant. There we go. One breastplate of righteousness and a belt of truth. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm fully kitted, are you? Uh, you won't get anywhere near me. Uh, smudge, I think you're still missing something, buddy. It's You haven't quite got it. You're right. I forgot something. No. Just a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, smart everybody. Smudge, he doesn't always quite keep up with. Ah, here we go, George. Now I've got the whole kit on. I've got the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. Ha ha! No runner for me. <laughs> uh, smudge, it all looks very, very impressive, but you're still fit missing something. Fully kitted out. 100% protected. It's, it's very impressive. You're still missing something. I don't think you've quite got it. No, I tried to put on the shoes of the good news of peace, the word of the gospel, but it, they didn't work. I don't... Oh, Smudge, why didn't they work? What's going on? That's not quite what I meant, but why didn't the shoes of the gospel of peace work? I don't have any feet. They fell off. Oh, oh Smudge, that, I'm sorry, buddy, but, but that's still not what I meant. Well, what do you mean, George? I put on the whole armour of God, just as Paul says in the end of Ephesians 6. And you're right, Smudge. Paul does talk about putting on the, the whole armour of God as we struggle against enemies, not of blood and flesh, but of spiritual forces. And he says if we want to stand firm, we've got to put on the whole armour of the God. The helmet of salvation. Yep, the helmet of salvation. The reminder that Jesus sets us free from sin and death. Yeah, he speaks of that. That's right. And he speaks of... The truth check. Yep, the, the belt of truth, the truth of God's word and the, the call to speak truthfully ourselves. Yep. He, breastplate of righteousness, check. Yep, and the breastplate of righteousness, that God's righteousness is now ours, that we're made righteous and we're to live righteously. He, he does speak of all those things. Yep, and, and also, as you've got there, he speaks of the, the shield of faith. Faith, yep. Yep, there's the shield of faith that we can cling on to when we struggle to keep believing. Yep. 
spirit, yeah. And he speaks of the, the sword of the spirit by which we're empowered to live for God. Yeah, yeah. I said that. They fell off. Yeah, and the, the shoes of the gospel of peace. He speaks of all of those things as part of the armor of God, not actual armor that we put on, but spiritual armor, these things that we live in as we continue to follow Jesus. But, but why not, George? But yeah, that's they're not going to save you from corona, uh, from COVID smudge. That that's not what they're about, and they're not going to work for you because you're a puppet. Puppets don't get COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh smudge but thank you for the good reminder of the need to put on the armor of god and you know the other thing paul says at the end of that bit in ephesians 6 of after we've put on the whole armor of god we need to remember to pray also to to pray always to be alert to keep on praying yeah, let's pray yeah let's pray now smudge Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that you'd help us to not just wear our masks as a means of keeping us and others safe, but to wear and to put on every day the armour that you give us, the things that you empower us with so that we might live for you. Uh, the reminder of the salvation we have in Jesus, the truth of your word, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit the breastplate of righteousness and shoes closed, clothed with the gospel of peace. Help us to put all this on God and to pray that we might follow you every day. All right, George. Great to see you. Catch you next time. Bye. Good to see you, Smudge. Bye. Great to see you, buddy. Bye. See ya. Bye. Whew, he's gone. Well, everyone, uh, we might turn from that little reminder of uh, Ephesians 6 to preparing ourselves to hear from God's word more now. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, give us wisdom and understanding. As we listen to your word, may we know you better, love you more, and learn to please you in all we do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Sarah Crutch, could I ask if you would do the Bible reading for us, please? If you'll just unmute yourself. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. Jesus said to them, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven and not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Sarah. And now it's over to you, Bishop Matt. Uh, you see, my family disappeared, so they're not in the spotlight. Well, folks, um, 
it's great to be with you uh, again, even if it's uh, via Zoom. We're, we're sort of getting used to it now, aren't we? Which in some ways uh, is uh, a bit sad. In other ways, it's a, a blessing to be able to have this technology, isn't it? Uh, to be able to, to gather even when um, we have to stay at home. But let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks for the opportunity that we have, both with the technology here, but also the time and comfort and peace to be able to gather together to worship your name freely and to ponder your word. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, uh, we're going to spend some time thinking about that passage from John chapter 6, but we do so in a very particular context ourselves, don't we? Uh, I suspect that all of us who have gathered together and many of those who, uh, who, who are part of our communities and certainly around the whole world have lived with, well, so many things that have had to be put on hold, whether it's a, a cancelled holiday. Indeed, we were to see my folks uh, for the first time in years, literally years uh, in the, the coming months, but they live in Western Australia, we live in Victoria, there's no way that we can balance all of the restrictions. So there's another cancelled holiday or maybe a missed birth. All of the, the grandparents who are around here who are dearly looking forward to seeing a grandchild or a niece and a nephew that you would have loved to have held in your arms. Well, by the time we get to see them, they're so large that they're running around and well, we've missed those very special, precious moments, or maybe it's uh, a long delayed reunion. So looking forward to seeing someone come back, maybe from overseas or friends who, who would have liked to have, have been together. We live in that time when we yearn for all of those things, whether it's that canceled holiday or the missed birth or the long delayed reunion, we yearn for so many different things in life that have just, well, not been possible. And I think we start to get that sense of yearning as the passage that Sarah read for us plays out today. Now, it's the end of quite a long and really dense passage. If this passage was bread, it would not only be wholemeal, it would be rye. It is full and heavy and dense and, well, you can really only have one or two slices at a time because there's so much to chew on. It's not like white bread that you can scoff it all down. But because it's so heavy and dense, we do need to remember that it comes as part of a whole story of flow. Now, rather than uh, me preaching for the next three hours to remind us all where we've come from, because, well, that would be like eating a whole loaf of rye bread all at once. I'm going to try and say there are three stories and three words that are really important that help us understand what to do with this yearning that we feel in our context and Jesus was addressing back then. The first story relates to those very first verses where Jesus talks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And the story comes from way, way back in early church history, way, way back to only about a generation or two after Jesus lived and those first disciples lived to a fellow called Justin Martyr. I don't think his parents gave him the name Martyr. He was called Justin Martyr because he died for his faith. But before he was made a martyr, he wrote a number of really significant, uh, uh, well, letters they were then, they became books that explained to those who were around about what it was that the Christians were doing and why they believed the things that they did. And one of the stories he writes was to explain to people why they would hear coming out of the houses because remember, there weren't church buildings way back then. People gathered in their houses. Why out of the houses? They would hear people say, eat this 
bread, which is my flesh, and drink this blood, which is the wine. They thought that those early Christians were cannibals. When we read the words like Jesus said just then, saying, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, we tend to skip over the top of, well, just how gruesome they really are. But for Justin Martyr, he needed to explain, actually, it's not a, a cannibalistic feast that was going on in, in these people's houses. Actually, what they were doing was sharing deeply and intimately in Jesus. Because the backstory to this, this passage, the, the context to this passage, is that Jesus is talking about intimacy. He's saying how closely we need to be to him and how closely we need to share his life. And that brings me to the key word. The key word in this first part of the passage is abide or stay. So in verse 56, Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. There's a two-way living, isn't there? So to abide means something more than just touch up against someone. It means to stay with someone. And Jesus says that deep, intimate sharing is one which means that my disciples stay with me and there's a flip side, I stay with them. And it's symbolised in that, that, that language that Jesus used. It's so close, it's like consuming him. It's also something that's referenced back to the Old Testament. In other words, this was always part of God's plan. God envisaged this because he would feed his people. And so Jesus has been using that, that same story from the Old Testament throughout this context of when God fed his people in the desert with the manna. Did you know that manna means what's this? The people said, what's this? When they discovered that it was like crisp bread lying on the, the ground in the desert. And it was God providing physical sustenance for them, which reminded them not only was God spiritually there for, him, for them, but God would help them in their day-to-day -day physical life. But also to abide, to remain with Jesus in the present. So it was not only symbolic, it was not only something that God had done physically in the past, but actually to remain with Jesus was the, the key task of human life in the present. So that's our first story, when Justin Martyr had to clear up a misunderstanding for people. But Jesus said the key task of humans are to abide with him, to stay with him. Well, the next story helps us understand the next part of the passage. Now, I used to be a physiotherapist. It's been a long time since I've practiced as a physio, but I can distinctly remember years and years ago, several decades ago, a, uh, an occasion when a heavily muscled man came into uh, the practice and he was at, in, in pain. He, he, was a, um, he had a very physical job and he, he was just one of these huge blokes, uh, not quite as heavily muscled as me. Well, actually, he would have made up three or four times of me it was that that big and he came with some significant neck and back pain it was christmas eve and he was anxious to be done with it uh, before uh, christmas day so he could kick back and, and enjoy the day well the it didn't seem right that he would have the same sort of pain given how strong he was i looked at his muscles i could see how tense they were and he knew how tense they were. He said, look, give me a massage just so that we can, we can sort this out. And I started. And he was just so big and his muscles were just so uh, tight that it seemed obvious that it was the tight muscles that were causing the pain. Now, what he didn't know, but I did, was that there was stuff underneath. I couldn't get to it because he was so big, but it was what under was underneath that was causing all of the problem. It took me 45 minutes, folks, 
45 minutes of working those muscles for them to relax. So I could get in and in one movement, manipulate his spine and the pain went. But it reminded me that so often what we see and what we hear at first glance seems to be what is going on, but underneath is the real issue. What we're seeing doesn't line up with what needs to happen to sort out the problem. And this is exactly what happened after Jesus had shared what it meant for people to have a full life. Remember, abide with me. People took offence in verse 60 when many of his disciples, so that was just the general word, word for people who had been following him, heard Jesus say this. They said, this teaching's difficult. Who can accept it? In other words, they couldn't see that what Jesus was saying was the actual antidote to their problems, their yearnings in the world, and they took offence. It didn't seem right. A bit like my fellow who thought that his tight muscles were all that there was, when in reality it was actually his spine. This teaching's difficult. Who can accept it? They took offence. Offence is a funny thing, isn't it? Sometimes we can take offence because we're ignorant of the issues that are lying behind what a person is trying to say. Sometimes we take offence because of our pride, because we think, how dare you tell me what's going on? It was a bit like my mate who came to see me as a physio. He thought he knew. Actually, underneath, he was ignorant of everything else that was going on in his body. Now, just as well for my friend, he wasn't so prideful that he, he got fed up after five minutes of me massaging away and said, look, that's enough, you can't do anything. He stuck with it. But when our ignorance flicks over into pride and we stop listening or stop hearing what's going on and understanding what's deep underneath our issues, it can be a problem. And what Jesus exposes when he talks to the disciples who were offended at what he was offering them, we see the difference between being gullible and being attentive. So Jesus isn't asking us to be gullible, to just accept anything, anything and everything. You know, sewers, open sewers, well, it's a bit like an open mind. Anything can flow through. He's not asking us to be gullible like that, but rather to be attentive to what God is doing in the world. And the test that Jesus gave those disciples who were being offended was that they would continue to come to him, come to me. But he goes further and says, look, at the end of the day, it's not your power that will enable you to come to me. It's actually the work of God the Father in you. The power is that the Father would grant you the capacity to keep coming. Now, friends, this is why the Old Testament is so important for us. In some ways, we could get by quite nicely, couldn't we, with, with the Gospels. We find out about Jesus. We see him hang on the cross and then those wonderful words of him come to life and reigning in power. But why the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament is like long division. Do you remember in primary school when you learn long division? You might be able to get the answer using short division, but actually we need to see the working out to see that we get the answer the right way. The Old Testament is God's long division for us. It shows us how God works and God's values and the way that he interacts with us in the world. It's the way that the Father draws us in so that when we come to Jesus, we're not gullible. We, we don't just pick up on anything. We, we, we see this is how God works and it reaches the answer in Jesus. It helps us to not take offence when we hear Jesus' hard words. Well, the last story, the last story is of a business person who had saved their money, who had hoarded everything that they had in order to get on board with the next big thing. And as they were walking down the street, they saw 
in the window of a jeweler's shop, a pearl of great price. And they rushed home and sold up everything they had so that they could take all of their business earnings and put it down as a payment on that pearl because they knew that here was the fulfillment of all of their hopes, all of their business dreams was wrapped up in this pearl of great price. My friends, I hope that you realise that I stole that story, didn't I? That was one that Jesus told about the kingdom of heaven, about how beautiful and precious that kingdom was and worth selling all that we have in order to have it. And this is where Jesus comes at the end of this story where he offers himself and says, the task of a disciple is to stay close to me as people despise this and take offence at Jesus placing himself in the centre, he turns to his disciples and say, well, what about you? You close ones, what about you? Are you going to take offence to? And Peter, you know, Peter, the disciple who so often says just what comes into his mind, he puts into words what we often think. Well, Peter, he gets it. Lord, Where else? Whom else will we go to? Because you have the words of eternal life. And that's the last word, eternal. Just like that business person who realised that they could sink all of their assets into this one pearl, Peter recognised that even if he didn't understand Jesus fully, he understood enough to know that what Jesus offered was eternal. It would endure. It is worth putting everything into As people, we tend to think in short-term terms, don't we? Only what is in front of our eyes. In other words, we seem to have the spiritual version of not seeing the wood for the trees. We get caught up in the present, the bark and the wood of what's immediately in front of us, the matchsticks rather than the whole forest. Yet Jesus is offering for us something that will endure, something that will bring the bigness, the largeness, the completeness of what God has in store and in mind because, well, it's only he who offers something that will last and last and last. So I bring us back to our context, all of those things that we've missed and the yearning we have to be able to do those, those things that, that are so important. I think what Jesus is offering right at the end of this passage, this long, dense passage, is for us to have the answer to all of those yearnings, which means in the moment we should be cultivating something like a deep hunger to be filled One of the traps of living through this time where so many things are being prevented of us is to want to jump too quickly to be filled, to be filled, to be filled. Yet actually, in this passage, in Peter's voice, we hear yearning. Only you have words of eternal life. Only you have the capacity to fill that yearning. And so three quick ways that we can cultivate something like that yearning that desires to be filled only by Jesus. The first is to stay close to him. And that's where those old fail-safe methods of praying hard, of reading the scriptures and contemplating what that means, how that lands with us in our everyday life is so important because that's how we stay close to Jesus, abide with Jesus. But then it is staying attentive, not to the now. The the now is with us. We have the the, the wood in front of our eyes. But to stay attentive, not to the now, but to the then. What is it that God has in store? Where is it that God's dragging us to? What's the vision of the whole forest? 
stay attentive to that. And then the third thing is to weigh the alternatives. Yep, our hearts ache. And Jesus' word of fulfillment does seem far off. But what alternatives do we have? What other things will fill us and last? What will provide the answers that we yearn for? Where else? Who else has those words of eternal life? Let me pray. Dear Lord, thank you that in Peter's voice we hear the reality. Where else have we to go? Because only you have words of eternal life. Help us to stay close, to abide with you, and help us to stay attentive to your big picture, your forest, rather than getting lost in the trees. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Matt. We're going to continue to do now what you have encouraged us to, to affirm our faith in the God who is eternal, who came to give us life. As we say these words with God's people around the world and through the ages, it's part of us drawing near to him, paying attention to what he has done and to what he will do and of weighing the alternatives. If not this, then what shall we believe in? So let's affirm together our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm going to spend some time continuing in prayer and we turn back to the brain household. Well, as we continue in prayer, when I say the words, the Lord be with you, you might like to, uh, sorry, when I say the words, Lord, hear our, uh, Lord, in your mercy, you might like to say, hear our prayer. So let's have a practice. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Dear Lord, as we look around our world today, it is hard to escape what awful straits so many people are in. And we cannot help but pray for those in Afghanistan at this moment as the Taliban has swept back through, it's reminded us how evil and wrong can fester and can hide, and it only takes a moment for it to spark forth. But Lord, we pray for those who are holding the airport, and we pray for those soldiers who, upon whom so many people's hopes are resting. Please give them safety. Give them compassion in the midst of their own fear and stress. And Lord, please help the logistics so that all those who need to, to escape and be brought out may be, may be done so. And we pray that the governments of the world who are ferrying people out, ours included, might look with great compassion and care on those who are seeking to come. May they not quibble at this moment, but make easy ways for people to come out. But we pray for those who are stuck in their homes, unable to get to the airport. Lord, there is literally nothing that we can do. 
So we pray that you might be active bringing safety and protection to them. We read in scripture and hear in other places of supernatural ways, ways beyond our knowing where people are kept safe. And Lord, we can only ask that that might be true for those who are in fear and hiding now. Mm. And Lord, as we look at the government that has replaced the old, that has swept back in, we can only pray that you would restrain wickedness. We pray for the many women of Afghanistan, those who have put their faith in you and those who would become a target for the Taliban. Lord, please restrain wickedness against them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, as we look at the world around us, and we think with broken hearts about Afghanistan. We also look at our nation and Lord, help our hearts to be swelled with gratitude, even if we find it difficult to uh, navigate the, the rules that come in and out, the restrictions that come in and out. Lord, the army remains in its barracks, the police, don't uh, swarm into our houses. The public service still runs. And our parliamentarians do, Lord, seek to weigh up what is right for our well-being. Lord, in our own frustrations, may we look around the world and give you thanks for such peace and security that we have. Please uphold those who make decisions and those who put them into play. May their hearts always be open to we, the people they seek to lead. And Lord, may we be a joy to govern and be consciously, continuously praying for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah, Lord, as we look to our communities, we know that even in the midst of such a calm, country, there are people who are affected in many ways by us going back into lockdown. I think particularly of those who are lonely and fearful and pray that you might draw close to them in a particular way. They be conscious of your uh, careful and, and guarding hand. But we pray for those whose jobs are at risk and who are financially very poorly off. Lord, may aid come to them. May each of us have our eyes open to those whom we can help, and may we find ways of providing practical assistance. And when anger rises or frustration creeps in, Lord, please temper our responses so that we seek to turn over our griefs to you and pray for those who are charged with responsibility to them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And dear Lord, we pray for your church, whether it's gathered here today on Zoom, whether it's gathered around our diocese, whether it's gathered throughout the world. Lord, may your son Jesus be our shining light, our pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Dear Lord, may our satisfaction be in you. And please give us a sense of confidence and calm that is a witness to others about how we might navigate these difficult times. Please give us a voice to sing of your praises so that others may see that one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And George, do we have the Lord's Prayer on the screen or shall I just leave? 
So friends, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. So as we conclude our prayers, let's pray. Faithful God, you have promised to hear the prayers of all who ask in Jesus' name. In your mercy, accept our prayers. Give us what we've asked in faith according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much. So we... Uh, come to the to, near towards the end of our service, dear friends. Just a little reminder that if we do find ourselves in the unfortunate position of being in lockdown uh, again next weekend and unable to gather in person, that we will have another diocesan Zoom service uh, and that this will get recorded and put online for those who weren't able to connect in live. So if you're uh, speaking with others and uh, they're longing, they weren't able to be part and were longing to uh, be encouraged, uh, point them to the Bendigo Diocesan website or YouTube channel and uh, this will go up there this afternoon or tomorrow morning. And as we prepare to go out, uh, not out, out of our homes, uh, but uh, to whatever the rest of the day might hold. As we come to the end of our time together, let's finish in another prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Now, I do just have to uh, say, just before we go, uh, that it looks like Smudge has either worked out how to clone himself or uh, to get out and about where he shouldn't be, because as while he's here in the registry, I can also see he's over in Marupna. <laughs> Smudge is my brother. Smudge oh. is my brother. And what's your name then? Nudge. Nudge. We've got Nudge and Smudge. Nudge and Smudge. Nudge and Smudge. Nudge and Smudge. There we go. Uh, well, lovely, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us all uh, this Sunday from those across the diocese. We've had over 40 households uh, take part today. So thank you very much, everyone, and God bless. <laughs>